Hey everyone, Lucas here, back again for another round of street photography in Tokyo with my Ricoh GR2. Uh, today we are in Shinjuku, and the goal today will be to get some photos of silhouettes against interesting backgrounds in the city. Also, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, we love comments, we love to answer them. I will be personally answering them on the video, so if you have any questions about what we're going to do today, don't hesitate to ask. So the goal today will be to find bright backgrounds, window displays, LED signs, etc., etc., storefronts, that kind of stuff, and put people in front, let them walk through the scene, and then I want to get a black human figure against a bright, colorful, hopefully interesting background. But first, we need to talk a little bit about the optimal settings for this kind of photography. So usually, I shoot with uh, aperture mode, and I keep my minimum shutter speed on 1 over 250. But, and that, and honestly, that works for silhouettes, usually. But I find that because when I'm, when, I, when I'm shooting a silhouette, I want it to be extremely sharp. I want that edge of the person and, you know, the boundary between the human figure and the background to be really, really, really clean. And if people are walking quickly across my scene, then a 250th sometimes is enough, but sometimes is not. So I would actually prefer to do a 500th of a second. So to that end, I'm going to use TAV mode on my uh, Ricoh here and I'm gonna put the shutter speed on a 500th of a second. And the aperture, because generally we're shooting in a, with a silhouette, we're gonna be shooting in a place where there's quite a bit of light. Um, in fact, even though it's nighttime, the backlit scenes with these, these large light, po uh, bright posters that I want to use, or kind of window displays and things like that, uh, LED screens and so on, they're so bright that I could actually keep the shutter, or sorry, the aperture rather small, let's say f4 or even f5.6, case by case, um, which gives me the benefit of having more depth of field, which means if the people are a little bit closer or a little bit farther than my sweet spot in terms of focus, they will still be very sharp. So I guess the tip is, in general, for silhouette photography to get a fast shutter speed, relatively fast shutter speed, and a somewhat small aperture to get more depth of field in order to get a really, really sharp and crisp silhouette because that's kind of what you want with the silhouette. You want that clean edge between the foreground, the subject, and the background. In terms of focus, I have two options that I find both work well. They're just different ways to do the, to get to the same result. One is to use the snap focus, which I've, I've mapped it to my uh, function two button over here. So when I press this button, snap focus is on. And then function one allows me to change the actual focusing distance. So depending on the situation, either a five meter or a two and a half meter snap focus zone will work well. You can see that on f5.6, I get from about like, I don't know, one and a half meters to infinity in focus. And if I go to the five meter zone, it's maybe from two and a half meters also to infinity. So that'll work very well for most of these situations where I'm shooting silhouettes from a decent distance. Everybody will be nice and sharp, especially at this smallish aperture of 5.6. But the other way I like to do it is to use the autofocus in the, with the pinpoint in the center. And when I focus on something, as you of course know, when something is focused, I can keep the button half pressed and the focus point will stay and I can move the camera around. But what maybe not everybody knows, it took me a while to realize this, is even if I take a picture, take a photo here, if I keep it half pressed between photos, the focus point will stay green. It's still locked in the exact distance that I need. So as you can see, if I focus on a person walking by or something in the scene, it will keep that focusing distance for me if I keep it half pressed and then as more subjects pass through the scene I can just keep shooting and keep shooting and so I get kind of like an impromptu zone you know I get the focus focus distance that I want exactly at that moment and then I can just keep it half pressed but as soon as I'm done with that distance I let go and I can just focus again on something else so the first part I want to try is the place I've used before for this kind of shot there's this big LED screen back there and the more, most important thing, I guess, I, you know, we talked about the settings, but in terms of how to find a location for a silhouette shot is you, of course, want to have a background that's bright, okay? But also, the environment around the background needs to be rather dark because if the people are well lit, you know, they could be well lit, but they need to be not as brightly lit as the background. There needs to be an imbalance in the light. That's how you can get a silhouette. If the foreground is too brightly lit, then the people won't be silhouettes. You'll be able to see them too clearly. So this should be good enough in terms of the LEDs are bright enough and the sidewalk environment is dark enough that there's going to be this difference. So let's pop over there and just see how this works.
Now one challenge that we're going to have with this LED screen is that it's constantly changing. So when there's something cool on the screen, there might not be a cool subject walking by. But that's part of the fun of street photography, right? Although this manga stuff might be pretty cool. Yeah, and, uh, yeah ISO is about 1600, which is a little darker than I expected. But this is, I think, the LED screen is going to be the darkest background we're going to use for this. All right, I'm going to get more in the middle, and I'm going to get pretty low because the screen doesn't go all the way to the bottom and the people, you know, I want them as much in front of it as possible, okay? Then I'm going to use snap focus, put it on five meters, okay, turn that on, all right? And there we go, with that background, it becomes, the ISO ends up 560, which is totally manageable. And honestly, I would say that's a little bit overexposed, so I'm gonna put the exposure compensation to minus 0.7, okay? And there we go. And here's our first subject. Well, that background's pretty cool. All right, these are actually pretty cool backgrounds, these uh, manga characters. Very nice. Oh, there we go. OK, OK. Now, I would like to get a little bit closer, to be honest, because I feel a little bit far from the scene. But I'm sure if we get too close, no one's going to walk between me and the background. So I'm just going to stay here, and I can just crop later. <laughs> That guy did something really funny. That was cool. All right. Now, something to note that I find very interesting. These are LEDs, and they are changing their color at a certain refresh rate. And because I'm shooting on a 500th of a second, sometimes the way the, um, the shutter speed and the LEDs you know, interact causes glitches in the LED display or what's being displayed. I think they're not as pronounced now because these scenes are mostly black and white. But when... Um, Shooting things that are colorful, you get these weird glitches. And I personally like that. I think that's a cool effect. But of course, now the background is not quite as bright. And in this case, see, this is why I prefer TAV and leaving the ISO on auto instead of shooting full manual, because this thing is changing constantly. So sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's really bright. So I would rather have the camera mess with the exposure for me so I don't have to worry about that aspect of it. All right, and then you see there's a very sudden change. Of course, each time it changes, I have to release the shutter button and press it again so that it redoes the, uh, you know, the metering, which means snap focus is much better for this than the pre-focusing method because obviously that wouldn't work if I want to keep changing the exposure. All right. Oh, here we go. This is kind of nice with that kanji there. Uh, but like I was saying, see, when the scene was cool, there was no subject. When the subject came, the scene is not so cool. But that's, that's how it is in street photography. Okay, so we've tried a couple of places, and in all of those instances, I used the uh, snap focus mode because it was less clear about where the, the subjects are going to be in terms of distance. And also, the, uh, especially with the LED screen, it was constantly changing, so I wanted the metering to change as well. And to do that, I can't keep the shutter button half pressed because the metering will stay locked. But in this case, this background's not going to change. And generally, I don't really want people close to me or far away. I just want them over there on the edge. So I'm going to focus on the ground, right on the floor by the edge of the stairs there. OK? And then as people walk through, I can shoot. I'm keeping this half pressed. OK? Maybe I'll focus just a little bit closer. I realize it's a little bit too far back. I'm going to focus on the ground just in front. So I'm just focusing on the ground at the distance where I know I want my subjects. And just to recap, my settings are f4, a 500th of a second, and the camera is choosing 640 ISO. And in this case, I'm on minus one EV for the exposure compensation, just to make sure the background is not blown out and the uh, silhouettes are nice and black, nice and dark. Okay. And as you can see, I'm keeping my finger on the, on the uh, shutter release the whole time, half press the whole time, so that the focus constantly stays locked about at that distance. And I'll get very consistent exposure, or well, exposure and focus this way without wasting time on autofocus, which is the hardest part of these kinds of shots because as people walk through the scene, you really don't have time to focus on them. By the time you get focused, they'll be gone. So either using this technique or snap focus is pretty much mandatory for getting nice silhouette shots like this. Okay, and then just to reiterate, I know I sure I've said it before already, but finding a place with good contrast is important. So here the background is extremely bright, 
while the subjects are very dark because the street is much less lit than that stairwell over there, which is super, super bright. All right, let's try to get a nice, clean, perfect subject, maybe a single person. This guy is pretty good. Okay. But then I'm going to try to get really low with the camera, but I'm still keeping it half pressed. Just this way I get less of the junk behind the uh, lip of the stairs. Cool. I can... Okay. All right, let's see those. That's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. All right, guys, so just as a quick recap to kind of summarize it all, you want to have a number of things for good silhouette shots. You need, of course, high contrast situation, bright background, dark foreground, smallish aperture, fastest shutter speed, and either snap focus or pre-focus and then keeping the shutter half pressed. That way you'll get nice, sharp, crystal clear silhouettes in the city at night. All right, so I hope you found that useful and interesting. Of course, please be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment. I will be personally looking through and answering the comments. Um, so any questions you have about this, I'm glad to answer them. And I'll catch you guys next time. In the meantime, no elephants allowed in Shinjuku. <laughs>